Hey everyone, I'm Kevin Rempel, Paralympian, keynote speaker, and creator of the Resilience Toolbox. And in this video, I wanna chat with you about how your mind is like a magnet. So, according to the uh, National Science Foundation, we have between 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day, and about 80% of those thoughts are negative, and 95% of them we often repeat over and over again. I recently published uh, a video and an article about how to believe in yourself after I've found so much inspiration studying David Nagel's content, uh, who focuses on money mindset. And in particular, David recommended a book in one of his um, episodes um, titled Working with the Law. And most people are familiar to some degree with you know the law of attraction. And some might find that that's a very real thing. Some might feel like it's maybe a little bit too fluffy. Uh, one thing I can say for sure is that I found the power of mindset and working with the law of the universe, let's call it, um, and what this book I'll talk about dives into, to be very real and very powerful. And, and though the law of attraction can seem very fluffy to many, um, one thing that I would highly encourage you to consider when you, if you would consider this book as an easy read, um, is that this book starts to break down different areas such as work, um, the law of thinking, the law of supply, attraction, receiving, the law of increase, the law of compensation, forgiveness, sacrifice, obedience, success. There's many different laws listed and it really helps illustrate in a simple form how to understand how your mind works, how the law of the universe works with um, cause and effect, and much, much more. But for the purposes of today, I wanna to talk about um, how in this particular section, it talks about how your mind is like a magnet. So I'm gonna read an excerpt from the book and then just kind of share a couple thoughts. The thing we dare not do is to fret and worry about supply or where our next dollar is coming from. Fretting and worrying tend to restrict and limit the supply at hand. They tend to close off the outflow of substance, whether that flow is small or large. Instead of lifting us up out of limitation, instead of improving our conditions or increasing our supply, they drag us deeper into the throes of doubt and fear. Instead of expecting more to follow, we grow tense and anxious, which, which increases our fear and brings us less and less. Instead of tightening up in our thinking, we must relax and be more expanding. We must educate our minds to a larger state of thinking. When we can, when we can think and realize more abundance, we shall receive more abundantly. This does not mean that the engineer is destined to be rich while the farmer remains poor. There are poor engineers and rich farmers. It is not the vocation that determines the riches, but the demands that we make of our vocations that determine our riches. We are able to think and to realize more abundance out of what we already have. We shall not only expand our thinking, but receive more abundantly. This is the basic principle of the law. And here's where it gets real juicy. I had to read that first part to kind of set up the next part. The magnet was not charged of itself, but had to be charged with an electric energy by one who understood the operation. And so this is where it start to dive, starts to dive into if you can understand working with the law. A magnet in the hands of an untrained man would be little charge, but in the care of a trained engineer, it could become a strong force of attraction and do great good. Likewise, the mind magnet of a person can be stimulated to a strong force of attraction. If it is possible to get help from one who has already had a full understanding of the law and can give a good start. Of course, the mind magnet can be charged with constructive thoughts, but it will take some time for these to be effective and the student who lacks perseverance may too readily become discouraged before the work is accomplished. And so first it talks about how much, so comparing like an engineer, using an engineer as an example, a magnet in the hands of an, someone who is untrained is of little use. So it takes some practice and some education to understand how the magnet works to put it to good use. 
similar to our mind. If we can continue to understand how our mind works, we can put it to good use. And so with a trained engineer, they can take the magnet and create a positive charge to attract another magnet to it like attracts like something else. And so if we treat our mind like a magnet and we deliberately educate ourselves about how to understand how it works and then create that charge through creating our own belief, then we can start to attract those things in our life that we really want. And so it continues to speak about how the supply is greater than, than the demand and the demand is determined by one's own thinking. The proposition with, with most of us is that our power of attraction is too weak to meet the demands. Our mind is like a magnet which draws unto itself, draws unto itself its own like type and kind a magnet can draw to itself in proportion to its power of magnetism that is generated or collected within itself our mental magnet is greatly reduced in strength by our worries and fears and our inflow of good is slowly closed off which is why it's so important that we that we are conscious about what we choose to allow into our mind. We need to be very deliberate daily about what we allow to feed our mind. If our mental force becomes too weakened, we may even repel what little good that is trying to reach us. And we can charge a magnet with electric energy to build up its power of magnetism so our mind can be charged with a mental energy that builds up a power of attraction. And here's the next, the last piece that's really awesome here is that like nature, we must follow a natural law. Nature never builds downhill, it always builds up. And that in particular really made me think about how, you know, the, you know the phrase like go with the flow? Well, going with the flow by nature's law is downhill. Water flows through gravity downhill. And so going with the flow, you know, casually and um, carelessly, not giving attention to where you would like to go and just com through comfort, just going with the flow, you find yourself eventually going downhill. However, by nature's law, that if something is, is seeking to grow, it is always going to strive for more. It's going to reach for more which means that it will, it will, through gravity and through law, it will ascend, it will reach the sky, it will reach towards the star, like, or sorry, the, the sun and the heat, because that's where energy comes from, is by reaching up and forward. And so um, I know that that could be up for debate. Energy comes from the soil, it comes from the ground as well. But, you know, if you look at um, trees as an example, is that they will always have the will to reach the sun. And that where the tree is located, it will always grow towards the sun. And its growth is, is moving up, is, ex is expanding, where uh, in, you know, negativity, um, destruction is always contracting. And so I'm going to end it with this here, is to think about how your mind is like a magnet. And that it's up to you to deliberately charge your mind with the positive thoughts, with the belief system with the resources take the time to negative empty the negative thoughts out of your mind and through that you can start to create your own belief and charge your mind for good and now if you'd like to learn a bit more about how to do this uh, inside the resilience toolbox um, a resource and a program that i created about how to condition your mind for success for success um, we have three key principles inside of there around locating your hero identifying um, someone you can look up to, your coach, your star, your connector, connector your teammate, and librarian. Um, who are those people that you can build in your network to help uh, lead you towards your success? You know, uh, secondly, one of the second tools is assembling your library. It's like identify what are some of the ways that you learn best through visual, auditory, reading, and writing, or kinesthetic strategies. Is it podcasts? Is it books? Is it writing strategies? Is it someone you need to um, see in person to help model? 
And what are some writing strategies around doing your homework, around emptying the negative thoughts out of your mind, getting them clear on paper, and then reframing them that you can start to uh, you know, create that belief, move yourself from hopeless to hopeful, and, and by doing so, become a hero in your own movie. So if you'd like to check out a little bit more about that, I'll have some information in the description below. You can visit kevinremple.com slash toolbox. And with that said, I hope that you can uh, see some value in this, take some, take some lessons. Uh, please share with anyone you find might uh, find some value in this as well. And uh, I'll see you again in the next video. Take care.